Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are all the books that I read in the later half of February. This video is gonna be short because I actually only read six books in the later half of February. I didn't really get a lot of reading done. Um, at the beginning of the month I told you I had a bad spell of migraines and towards the end of the month I was prepping a lot for a market that I was going to be a part of. I had my first ever like gluten-free baking booth pop up at a market in my town um, and so I was doing a lot of prep work for that and I would stay up till like midnight every night baking and um, I'd go to sleep like I couldn't keep my eyes open after after that. So now that that's all done I plan to get a lot of more reading done in March but I only have six books to talk about today and like I think half of them are rereads. So let's just get into it. First, I ended up reading Sweetest in the Gale by Olivia Dade. This is actually a collection of three short stories in the, um, what's the series called? There's something about Marysburg series, which I had a goal to finish this series in February, which I did. This is a collection of short stories. I do have a review for all three books here. Um, so this is a collection of short stories, like I said before. They're all novellas focused on plus size characters. There's even some plus size heroes in here and specifically like older than usual romance couples. So a lot of times in romance, as you'll see people in their 20s, early teens even, and 30s. Well, these characters focus on their 40s and 50s. What was just notified? I got it, it was just a notification. <laughs> okay, okay, we're good. Anyway, so the first one is the one that takes the title of the book. This is the short story, Sweetest in the Gale. And this is about uh, teachers who work at the high school that this series like centers around. There's a high school in this small town called, Mar called Marysburg. And um, both of these characters are teachers there. The heroine is very much known for her very spunky, bright, sassy personality. But then when they come back for in-service that week before like students come to like prep their classrooms and everything, um, the hero, who's another teacher there, notices like she's not herself. She's very glum and down and turns out she's dealing with grief. She just recently lost her sister over the break. It's definitely affected her and he's lost one, someone himself. He's a widower. So they're kind of dealing with their grief together and they end up falling for each other. Tropes for this one is teachers, a widower, um, and trigger warning in here for grief over death of a loved one for sure. Then the second story is my favorite. This one's called Unraveled. This is another one where both characters work at that high school. The hero is a math teacher and he is assigned to um, observe a new teacher that comes. That happens a lot in schools where you'll be observed by a senior level teacher if you're coming in and you're a new teacher. She is the art teacher. And she's so cool. She makes mini dioramas of crime scenes. It's so cool. And she like kind of implements that into her art classes as well. She has a whole unit of this that her students can like partake in. It's so cool. And to add another cool factor, like it's a crime scene diorama and the goal is to solve the murder that happens in the diorama like by like looking around you could try and solve the murder which is really amazing it's so fun this hero is very straight laced button up a little bit stiff okay um and then when he gets to know the heroine who's a little bit wild crazy always wears like space buns and bright colors and literally makes dioramas of murder scenes um they end up falling for each other and he just completely softens for her. I loved this one. Tropes for this one is opposites attract and again, teachers. And the last story is Cover Me. And both these characters have been friends since college. However, this is their romance about getting into a marriage of convenience. The heroine just realized that she could have breast cancer, but she does not have health insurance. And the hero is like, let's just get married so you can be on my health insurance. Like, I want to do this for you. And they end up falling for each other while they're in this marriage of convenience. Oops, in here, friends to lovers, marriage of convenience, a baker heroine. The heroine bakes, love that. And the hero loves that she bakes. He's a plus size hero. Love to see that representation as well. Um, trigger warnings in here for medical discussions and possible cancer. So I really love this collection of short stories and the audiobooks were fantastic for it. I read another book off of my TBR. Look at me reading books off my TBR. This one is Bite the Woman That Feeds by Penelope Barasetti. This one is interesting. Okay, so our heroine lives in this fantasy realm. It's fantasy realm and there is a sickness going around killing humans and she just so happens to be immune. So she has kind of like taken over the job of helping take care of the sick, helping them before they die essentially. And um, in the next like town, kingdom over is actually the kingdom of vampires. And they are starting to get sick and die out because all the humans are getting sick and dying out because that's their food source. King Snake, the hero of the story, ends up kind of like anti-hero of the story. 
morally gray hero? I don't know. He's a, he's the main character dude, okay? Anyway, he goes to the human kingdom, goes up to the king who actually used to be the heroine's ex-lover and tells him like, give me this many humans or I'll take all of them because we need food. The queen tells the king, just give him the heroine, like give him your ex-lover, like she's immune. And so that's what happened. Like she gets sacrificed to these vampires and she is terrified, but she's not gonna give up without a fight. She tries to escape many times. Anyway, her and King Snake get in this deal where he's like, if you stop trying to run away and you let me feed off of you, I will help you try and find a cure to this sickness because you're immune. So if I taste your blood, maybe I can find out what makes your blood so special and we can create an um, immunity for your people because we don't want your people dying out because that's our food source. And it's their romance. Um, this one was interesting. I don't really know what to think of it, honestly. Um, it, I think it was a very fun concept. Um, just the hero and the heroine kind of got on my nerves at some points because I just, they weren't my favorite thing. Um, but I did love this world and like the vampire aspect. Um, but I did see a few of the twists coming. So there are trigger warnings in here for non-con, death, blood, snakes, and kidnapping. If you are scared of snakes, don't read this book. The hero has like a best friend who's a snake. I don't recommend reading it if you are, if you have a snake phobia. Then I have uh, two rereads. So Tori from Novel Life put together this uh, readathon for the Wraith Kings readathon. And a few of us actually read these books. We're co-hosts. I was one of the co-hosts for this read along where we read the first three books in the Wraith King series. Um, I read Radiance at the beginning of the month, but I thought I'd just tell y'all this is the first book because a lot of people know what Radiance is, but I reread these two books in the later half. This is Eidolon, the second book. This is the conclusion to Ildicon Brisham's story from book one, a fantasy romance. This one deals a lot more with war and political intrigue and stuff, um, which I love this one, five stars. And the Epos King is about a new couple who we've met in the other books. Um, you have like a black cat, heroine and a golden retriever hero in this fantasy world. It is so fun. He's a human. She is a Kai, which gray skin, yellow eyed, like sharp clawed creature people. And these two have to team up to go on a quest together. I think I originally gave this book 4.5 stars when I read it. I think I'm going to keep it like that. Um, I love this one. There just were some points where I just wanted to be with Ildiko and Brishin, which is so sad to say, but I love this couple as well. I just love Ildiko and Brishin, like to the max amount. So I love this reread. It was really fun. I haven't like reread this book specifically ever before. So it was very fun. So thank you so much, Tori, for asking me to be a part of that read along. Then I read The Aliens Prize by Zoe J. Raven. This was our first Beam Me Up book club pick with me and Tiffany. It was so much fun. I loved doing this with Tiffany. This is the first book in Zoe J. Raven's Warriors of Luxuria, Luxuria. This really follows the typical alien romance plotline that you see a lot where the heroine gets kidnapped from Earth, gets put on a like slave auction block and the hero takes her as his. Um, he actually wins her though. Like he wins this gladiator fight and they're like, oh, pick a prize and that's her. And then he realizes that they're fated mates. He brings her to his, his people and everything. So it's a very to the point, very, very typical alien romance. Um, but I also think it was really fun. And I do think it was one of Zoe Jervin's like first ever published books. So she has definitely grown in her writing. Like I own like the entire Horde King books up there and they are 10 out of 10 amazing. So this was a, such a fun book to read with Tiffany. If you wanna know like our in-depth thoughts on it and wanna know Tiffany's thoughts, I'll leave our live show link down below. You can go check it out, watch the playback of it. But I had a lot of fun with Tiffany. So thank you so much Tiffany for doing this with me. And um, thank y'all so much for joining in. If you watched the live show and read this book with us, thank y'all so much. And um, now that you're here, I'll let you know that our book club book for next month is already in my March TBR video. So you can go check that out if you want to know what next month's book is. We're already on my last book, <laughs> y'all. This was fast. Just because I haven't had a lot of time to read. Technically, I did finish this book on March 1st. Okay, I will admit that. Um, but I read the majority of it in February, so I'm counting it towards February. Okay, um, so this is The Longing of Lone Wolves. And I'm not even going to say the author's name because I'm going to butcher that to the max. But I've heard a lot of my friends read this book and a lot of them love it. Um, I didn't really know what I was getting into it, but I really enjoyed my time with this book. This book starts out with our heroine in Las Vegas. This takes place in Las Vegas. The world is kind of in this hazy moment. There's a lot of pollution going around. It's kind of like futuristic in that aspect where the world like kind of like feels like it's ending. And then it cuts to the heroine waking up in snow. And she's like, where am I? This book has jumped. Like she has basically time traveled or something. 
years, years, hundreds and thousands of years into the future on Earth, where Earth is like, it's now post-apocalyptic and there's now fae and fantasy creatures like all on the Earth. Anyway, the hero ends up finding her. This hero has been cursed because of certain reasons. I don't wanna spoil the book. But anyway, he's been cursed and so people can't see him. And so when the heroine sees him, He's like, wait, you can see me? Like, what is going on? Um, and he kind of puts her in this magical bind with him. Like, she's in trouble. And he's like, I will save you if you agree to be my voice and um, do all this other stuff for me. Okay. And she agrees because she doesn't want to die. She's in this very dangerous situation. And anyway, it's about them traveling to um, his people and his land. And uh, it's a lot of bickering and bantering. Um, he's like this fae wolf shifter creature. I thought it was so unique and fun. I love post-apocalyptic books. This book has really like sparked my love for post-apocalyptic books again, because um, I knew I already loved them, but then I'm like, why haven't I read one in so long? They're so fun. Like I'm in that mood right now to just pick up all the post-apocalyptic romances. I wanna read more. I haven't even read all that many. And there are only a few that I would recommend to other people, um, but I, I wanna read more. So this is one I would recommend. I do wanna read more in the series, like the whole series is on my Libby. So I'm definitely gonna be checking them out and reading them as they come in through my holds. But this one is so stinking fun and I cannot wait to read more. So definitely recommend this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all six books that I read in the later half of February. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, um, I would love to know. What was your favorite book that you read in February? Mine probably is House of Flame and Shadow, which like my first book that I read in February. So. Anyways, um, let me know what your favorite was down below. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me what emoji we're gonna do. Let's do a snake. Let's do a snake emoji. <laughs> Bite the woman that feeds book. That book has snakes in it. Anyway, um, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.